Hi everyone, Quillfan here again. So quite recently I posted a couple pictures of the Lily White Tarot and the Lily Black Tarot on my Instagram and I got asked to do a walkthrough. And because I've already worked with this deck for a bit now, I'll try a little review as well. Um, in summary, I love those decks. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the boxes. Um, they come in hardcover boxes, as you can tell. They come wrapped so beautifully with little flowers on tops and little like colorful ribbons and it was just so beautiful um and they were wrapped in bubble wrap and everything you can think of but still my lily black tarot box got a bit like roughed up at the edge i don't really mind because um it's fully intact in on the inside but still i wanted to um tell you that um the box already has this gorgeous gold foil detail that um, the backs of the cards do have as well. I'm going to show you that later. On the back there is this image of the world card and all information you need. So if you want to find out more about this deck, go to the homepage of the artist. Um, it's an independently published deck. Um, I believe the artist Celia Melville is um, French. Um, so the homepage is in French as well, but you can choose um, English as language. So, lid comes off easily. Um, it comes with um, this little artist um, thingy. <laughs> it also comes with a bookmark, which I don't have here right now because it's in the other room. Um, and it comes with this little white, well... I wanted to say little white book, but it isn't a little, little white book. It's a little white paper with um, the all the information about the cards in French on one side and in English on the other. So I think you can work with that. And most of us will already have um, severe knowledge of the Rider Waite Smith system anyways. So I think everyone can work with these cards straight away um in the end i'm gonna lay them out in a little reading and i will pair them up with two other decks um the uh, oh my goodness um l'oracle de reflet i think something like that <laughs> which is by the same artist as you can see um and i will also pair it up with the mind maze oracle which is by Oh, I always have to look those ladies up because I cannot remember their names for the life of me by those lovely women. Um, just so you can see how it works together and how um, it works with or how they work together and how they work with other um, decks. So, <clears throat> excuse me. The Lily Black Tarot comes already edged. Oh, there's this lovely ribbon here so you can take it out easily. Um, it comes edged in black. Um, it does not prefer to be riffle shuffled, as you can see here. So it does um, chip a bit. Not necessarily on the card. So the card isn't really um, affected. But um, just the edging seems to come off. But again, you can just kind of re-edge it. So I really don't care about that. Um, the Lily White Tarot comes without an edging, so it comes in white on the edge. I did edge it golden because I thought it needed it. I'm not 100% sure about the marker I used. I used a lacquer marker for this one. Usually I, usually I use a pigment marker. And this one seems to kind of flake a bit. So you can see up here where I riffle shuffle the deck a couple times, obviously. It doesn't smear on my finger, so there's... No smearing necessarily, but it does flake. Well, that's not a problem of the deck. That's a problem of my edging, obviously. Um, the backs are stunningly beautiful. I mean, so gorgeous with the gold. Beautiful. Um, the cardstock itself is just stunning. Um, it's not too thick. It's not too sturdy. It's not too thin. It's not too flexible. It's just perfect in regards of that. It's a beautiful mat without um, the effect that it usually has. Like if you have um, a, a thoroughly matte deck, you usually have the effect that you can see every fingerprint. Oh, you can see here the flaking I talked about. Um, <clears throat> so you can see every fingerprint. You don't have that with this deck. So no fingerprints on the deck. 
that's a huge plus. Um, I am a Riffle Schaeffler. I have to say they do not really spring back to their own um, form that well. So um, if you are a, well, if you are a riffle shuffler like me, you always have to do like riffle shuffling in one direction. Then you have to turn the cards and do it again, or you have to bridge the cards, anything like that, so they lay flat properly in the end. That's a minus. Everything else is a plus. So um, I really like those. Okay, now off to the cards. I think the full card is um, pretty standard um, or easy to read. So I will not talk about that for a big time. Oh, what I wanted to mention, though, is um, the difference in tone of those decks. Um, because um, it really is obvious that this one is much more um, at home in the inner landscape to me. Um, so right now, like if you look at the full card, you can see, to me, you see a moonlit landscape, whereas here you have kind of the sunrise behind the tree. Um, so to me, I love to use both decks together um, in kind of as above, so below readings. I love to do shadow and light readings with those decks. I love to use them separately as well. Um, using the um, Lily Black Tarot more for introspection, for um, reflection, for like just exploring the inner landscape. Um, and the Lily White Tarot I love to use much more for everything that's got to do like with the outer world, me interacting with the world, uh, influence influences of the outer world, stuff like that. Um, so that's just the general feel I have. I wanted to point that out so I don't have to kind of say it over and over again for every card. So here's the full. Beautiful image, beautiful use of um, color. And I have to say in general in this deck, there is a humongously beautiful, that's not like a good phrase, that's a beautiful use of symbolism. It's not overpowering, so there is not too much um, going on in the cards, but... Um, Still, there are, there's a, a lovely use of symbols in almost every card, so I really enjoy that. Here's the magician. I really, really love the magician. I love that he or she has all the elements on as a tattoo on his or her fingers. I love this kind of atom um, he or she creates. It always reminds me of the Big Bang, you know, so it's just about creation. It's about uh, manifestation. Really, really love that. And again, you can see that this one is much more looking like it's in a, in a ghostly, in a um, kind of otherworldly realm. The High Priestess, again, lovely use of symbolism. You have the moon, you have the owl, you have the pomegranate, you have the pillars. So everything you need is in there. The Empress, I don't know, I just get joy from looking at this card. There's abundance, there's creativity, fertility, it's just, ah, oh, it's just joyful. Really love this card. And then on the other hand, you have the more kind of rigid Emperor with a more rigid structure. You have the Ankh symbol, um, you have the fire energy, so... Oh. It's just lovely and it's a deck that um, if you look at it and you work with it and you work with it again and again and again and again and you will realize new things every once in a while so um it's it's worth exploring this deck over and over again so that's just fun to me here you have the hierophant i love this card yeah it's very traditional in regards of the keys you have the book what i really like about it though is the difference in um kind of energy um behind the book like you have a fiery sunny energy here this is one that's more like a moon vibe to me so it's about how to apply this knowledge and this tradition where to apply it um where to re reflect upon it so i really like that um the lover's card um I can read it. I like it visually. I'm not too fond of it because I am kind of missing the choice aspect and the three-dimensional aspect of the lover's card in general. So it's not my favorite, I have to say. But it's okay. I can read with it. Um, the um, chariot. Love this one. 
I love that I'm going to show you like the, the lily white right now because it's easier to see. But I love that you have kind of a more um, tamed horse. You can see it with a headpiece up here. And it seems like you have a wild horse as well. Um, I love how he or she is holding the reins very loosely. What I'm not so happy about is the um, the armor he or she is wearing because I don't think it's necessary with a um, cherry cart, but I can deal with that. But I really, really love the horses. Um, in this deck, eight is justice. So again, a lot of symbolism here. You have the moon, you have the elements, you have the scales, you have the sword, you have the blinded eye. So um, all you need really. The hermit, very traditional, very beautiful. The wheel of fortune. I actually have to say, those of you who know me know that I am having a hard time finding a um, Wheel of Fortune card that I really, really like. I love this one. I don't like it. I love it. Um, it has everything I need. It has all the circles, all the cycles I need. It has the spider's web. It just has everything, all the duality, all the ups and downs. I just love it. Perfect. To me, it's a perfect, perfect Wheel of Fortune card really like the strength card as well because it has kind of um, a terror of the hidden realm um, vibe to me so this being in tune with each other um, not necessarily trying to tame one another or trying to force myself upon the beast but being really in tune being really kind of together in all differences so um really really like that here's the hanged man I think this one is really interesting because of the use of the snake in this card. Um, because the snake, for one, binds the hanged man to the tree, so it holds him up. But she's always also biting him here. So um, there's a lot of things going on here that you can kind of go from in a reading. Death. Gorgeous death card with the use of um, a snowdrop. Um, I think that's how it's called in English. Um, I love that she used it in this card simply because of um, its meanings, its spiritual meanings and um, the way that it's about new beginnings, but it's also about not fear, not being fearful of death. Um, so really like it, really, really like it. Temperance, um, a lot going on on the card, but the message itself is quite simple and quite clear. <clears throat> the devil if you just look at the cards and just take the picture it's quite an innocent one to, for a for a um, devil card but if you feel the vibe of the card and look at the color scheme it really makes sense because it looks like it's about an unhealthy a poisonous um, relationship um, so it's about giving away power it's about someone being superior someone being lesser it's about um and that doesn't necessarily have to apply only to persons like to two persons but it can be like within you it can be with addiction it can be with everything so i really actually like this card a lot i love the colors used for it i love the tower card i mean it's a sad one <laughs> i mean look at who i don't really know it's a stag i think or maybe an elk i don't know I cannot really tell. Um, I love, um, we have the lightning as we do in all tower cards. I love this kind of um, watery vibe because that's something personal to me, which I think every tower card needs. Um, I love that it's a blow to the ego. I love that it's definitely a change in situation, but it allows also for growth. Um, so it's I really, really, really like what you can do with this card, the way you can go with this card. The star, quite traditional. I love the moon card. I love that because of the reflection, you have the whole cycle of the moon. Um, I love that she's wearing the hound mask or the dog mask um, in the upper picture. And then in the reflection, it's a howling wolf. It's just stunning. It's just beautiful. The sun card, very traditional, like for more na nature-based decks, that's what you always see is like sunflowers, the sun itself. You need some, see some um, 
wheat teeth. So that's very traditional. I really like the um, butterfly for um, judgment. Again, quite traditional. And then here you have the World Cup, which is just beautiful. And I have to admit, it took me a good look at the Lily Black Tarot to realize that there are also hands holding this um, scenery in the Lily White Tarot. <laughs> I didn't realize it like straight away that there actually are hands holding everything together. And I love that the tree actually looks like the tree in the full card. So that's just perfect to me. Let's quickly put this to the side or I'm going to make a mess because I know myself. <laughs> and let's move on to the Minor Arcana. So, very traditional um, Ace of Swords. My camera doesn't want to focus. I don't know why. Here we go. Um, so, very traditional Ace of Swords. I love the use of birds, um, especially like um, hawks and eagles and falcon in the sword cards. Very traditional um, Two of Swords, again, for nature-based decks. Um, really like it. Love the Three of uh, Swords, because simply because of a little detail that makes perfect sense to me, which is that um, you have the Pierced Heart, as you do in all three of, or in most of the Three of Swords cards. Um, what I really love is that you have this... I don't know if it's an eagle. Probably it's an eagle. This eagle kind of blocking the way to the sun. So um, to me, this is kind of a message in itself. And that's that um, hurt feelings sometimes have to be endured. You sometimes have to um, let them have their own space and not try to overthink them because um, or to analyze them too much, because that sometimes is blocking the proper way to joy, to joy, to happiness again. Um, so I love this kind of, this is something important to me. So um, maybe you will see it totally differently, which is totally fine with me, but that's just a little message that I love in this particular card. Here you have the Four of Swords, again, a card I really love. I don't know why my camera has a, is having a hard time focusing right now. Um, what I like about that is kind of the time limit because of the use of incense here. Um, to me, this gives the vibe that once the incense has burned down, like the the pause is over, the rest is over. You have to resume what you were doing. So um, really like that. Five of Swords. I can read it. It's not a card that speaks out to me that much, I have to admit. Six of Swords, on the other hand, I really love. I love the pathway. I love um, the swords on the sides. Um, it's actually not much, not that much about another person helping, as you sometimes have with a ferryman. Um, but you have to take the steps. So you have to take new perspectives. Really like that. I'm sorry. I really don't know why my camera isn't focusing properly or like most of the time. Um, the Seven of Swords, what I really love about that card, and again, that's very personal, is the use of Moon in both of the cards. Simply because, um, to me, um, the Seven of Swords a lot of the time speaks about taking a risk. Um, about going on a path that's maybe not 100% aligning with your personal moral compass. Um maybe you have to hurt someone or leave someone behind along the way. So it's always about something not like it's not an easy path, easy path you have to take. And so to me, um, the Seven of Swords a lot of the times has this internal question of is it worth it? Is this really the way you want to go? Is this really the is the result worth it? Is it going to be what you want. So I really love this kind of internal questioning with the moon inside of it. I also love that the hawk or eagle is dropping a sword. So yeah, I love this card. I love the eight of sword as well with the um, eagle being trapped simply by air as the incense is building kind of a roof to this prison. Um, but it's just air. He could just leap off and fly away. Um, which he doesn't. So really like that. Love the Nine of Swords as well because I actually can hear the screeching sound. Um, so I can almost feel the pain in my head. Um, 
love that. The Ten of Swords, quite traditional again for a nature-based deck. And then you have the court cards, always with a um, a child um, and the elemental symbol um, as the page. And the page always has, why doesn't it focus? Come on, focus. Focus, thank you. Um, has a heart, a little heart um, on top of the um, suit symbol. Then you have the um, um, knight. <laughs> the knight always has this little sun symbol. And it's always a torso, the main animal of the suit, um, the elemental symbol of the suit, and a little bit of um, other symbols usually accompanying. So it's always the same for all the suits, like the um, structure is always the same. The Queen of Swords has, um, a, I don't know, three-pointed <laughs> crown. I love the feather hat piece she's wearing. Um, and then the King of Swords has a four-pointed um, crown. And I actually love that he's wrinkling his um, forehead <laughs> as, in, as if he's in, in um, deep thought. So really love that. Actually, I think he's quite attractive, but that's just me. <laughs> okay, off to the um, cup cards. So Ace of Cups. Very traditional with the fish with the overflowing cups, so there's not much to talk about that. Um, I love the two of cups because I don't know why, but there is a huge intimacy um, radiating from this card, so um, really like that. Three of cups, very joyful. I love the diversity in regards of the color of the fish and in regards of the shape of the cups, um, and it's just it looks joyful just very very joyful four of cups again lovely use of the moon symbols lovely use of the lotus um so you have like the rest you have the um retrospection um or introspection you can also of course interpret it as uh, interpret is as my goodness interpret it as boredom because there is no movement in the water so there could be stagnation but it's you can also read it like in a lot of different ways so really love that five of cups i love the little buds growing here um so it has to kind of give you an outlook that once you've done grieving there can something grow from there so um or that even if you are still grieving because you will not repair those cups, but even if with, with grieving still going on, something new can emerge, something new can arise. So I um, really love that. Here we have the six of cups. I don't know, it's really joyful. It's quite innocent card. It's um, to me, it's kind of about um, preserving memories. Um, so I really like that little kind of pond in the inner cup here surrounded by all the other cups and, and I love the use of color I just love it <laughs> the seven of cups well it's about high expectations it's maybe about illusions the salmon definitely has to jump high and has to work its way up all of these well not too stable looking cups to get to this flower so is it worth it maybe it's not even there maybe it's kind of a fata morgana i don't know the english word for that <laughs> an illusion who knows love the pathway again in the um, eight of cups i love the use of the waterfall so just gorgeous the nine of cups i love this kind of peaceful serene vibe um, that it has so that's really really gorgeous someone is very comfortable in his or her position there and then excuse me we have the ten of cups I love that there is a school of fish um, because it is about family it's about like not necessarily like a biological family but just about the family you have you create um, it's about being together um, so that's just and it's about, I don't know, fish in general stand for abundance. So it's abundance of emotion. It's abundance of happiness. So really like that. And then again, you have the child as the page with the fish and with the elemental 
sign of water. You have the torso, in this case of a woman, um, again with the fish and the elemental sign. Gorgeous queen of cups here. And then you have the king of cups. Love it. I love how he's, he is creating the symbol of um, the of water with his fingers almost. So I really like that. So that's the cup suit. Let's move on to the wands. So ace of wand again, very traditional, something we have seen like that a lot of the time. I am in love with the two of cup, uh, two of wands. I love that you have this. Um, outlook this looking forward but you have this how to get there like you have to plan it i love that you have the sunrise here so it's just i don't know there is just so much going on there i like that you have a waning moon um here so maybe it's also about reflecting upon what didn't work to so you can change it for the sunrise so it's just there's a lot you can actually do there so it's about decision making and lada yada yada so i can go on forever i like this card love the three of wands as well um with a fox which is always kind of to me about adaptability about flexibility quick thinking i love that you have the fire energy in it um so it's about passion it's about your dreams and desires it's about creativity this is a card that tells you to do it and this is the vibe that I get from this card. Again, just by the use again of, of, of uh, my goodness, I cannot talk. <sighs> I haven't done videos in a while in a while, so please stick with me. <laughs> um, it's just the vibe of the cards because of the use of the um, symbols. That's what I wanted to say. So here we have the four of ones. Um, let's get a bit closer to the camera. <clears throat> I love the flowers. They are joyful. I love the um, um, rectangular shape because it kind of represents stability. I can get that. I love the foxes. I love how playful they look and how much fun they seem to have. What I don't get is why, why are they trapped in a spider's web? Why? Those of you who have the book, um, maybe you can explain that to me in the comics because in the comics in the comments because I really don't get it that's the only thing kind of throwing me off of this card because otherwise I really like it and I think it's perfect but the spider's web why what the heck <clears throat> the five of wands really love that again that's definitely a fox I wouldn't want to meet at night <laughs> or at day I um it, it looks really dangerous um and determined and uh yeah <laughs> so that's definitely a fierce um and fierce energy and attention in this card um the six of wands i really love that again because of the flame igniting the other sticks so it's spreading i also love the laurel wreath in it which is about victory so that's quite easy but this spreading of fire is something that i really adore about this card the seven of wands, well, it's holding out in the rain, right? Like the flame is holding out in the rain. So it is about um, perseverance. It's about defense. So everything you need is in the card with just two simple things, fire and rain. <laughs> Love the eight of wands as well because of the lightning. I think there should be more lightnings in eight of wands because it just makes perfect sense because there is a burst of energy just very momentarily so if you don't use that burst of energy at that time at that moment exactly to overcome the hurdles you want um, to overcome or to take the chance you want to take it's gone you have to take it that very minute or it's gone so i really really like that um lightning in this picture the nine of wands um, is again very um, standard, very traditional. My camera still doesn't want to focus. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, so yeah, very traditional. Ten of Wands definitely has 
an aspect of oppression, but I feel like there is a lot more going on in this card that I cannot wrap my head around right now. Um, like there is a very misty vibe there, the foxes in the background howling, kind of edging this other fox on, it seems like. So there is a lot going on in this card. I still have to kind of work my way through this card. The Page of Wands, gorgeous. The Knight of Wands. What I really, really love about this card is that you almost, because of all the flames and the smoke, can't really see the torso. Or you can see the torso, but you also can see other things. So it's like you're looking in real into real flames. So I really love that because, for example, I can see the torso, but I can also see a human heart in this picture. So I really love it. This is the most gorgeous um, Queen of Wands. Not ever, but definitely it's, it's up there. She's so beautiful. Wow. What was that? And then here's the King of Wands. Gorgeous as well. So that was the one suit. Off to the Pentacles. Um, well, Ace of Pentacles, very traditional again. You have the seed um, or the seedling growing. I love again that you have more of a moonlit vibe here and more of a fiery sunny vibe here. So again, that's the, just the theme of the deck to me. Two of um, Pentacles, very traditional as well. Um, with the balancing aspect. I love what she did in the Three of Pentacles using the triangle um, just for the structure and movement. Um, putting it all upon... Um, uh, ah, I'm missing the word. Upon like work stuff. <laughs> so you have the hammer, you have the nails. So it's about work. It's about working together. It's about creating something together. It's about your talents. Love it. The, whoopsie, four of pentacles, very traditional again with the snake coiling around the coins. Um, again, there is a lot of ways you can read this. Um, I know that people read the four of pentacles differently, um, but for me, it depends upon um, like the other cards. So I actually do not read them the same all the time. So it can be about being a miser. It can also be about um, just seeing what you got, right? Um, really like the Five of Pentacles as well. Um, I think there's, again, the use of, even though it's it's stained, sorry, it's stained in a more uh, pinkish tone, but it's still the use of snow drops. <laughs> I was missing the word for a second of snowdrops so it is even though there is kind of it's draining like you can see the color is draining from the from the coins um there's also like the perspective of there will be a new beginning in again those coins at the bottom here that are snowed upon now um, once the snow will melt you will find them again so it's Again, you can go a lot of ways with these cards. You can also just simply talk about loss. So, um, I love it. Six of Pentacles. It's about giving and taking. It's about balancing it out. Um, as you can see here with the scales. I even think that it's more, um, there is more focus upon that in the um, Lily Black Tarot because of this ribbon that's wrapping its way around of the arms of those two people in kind of a um, eternity sign fashion <laughs> um, which to me has a karmic vibe so this one speaks to karma about me no speaks about karma to me that that's the right use of words <laughs> okay quite easy to read seven of pentacles love the bee in the eight of pentacles because it's about being busy it's about um, being organized and about order so that's quite easy actually discipline is a huge word with bees always love the falcon in the nine of pentacles um simply because it it's just there's so much about it um you have like the victory and success um but you also have like this focus and will willpower um 
just through the symbol of the falcon you also have the stability of like this um the stick here you have um freedom as well because let's face it this bird could go away like and fly away wherever he wants or she wants i love this kind of fiery energy in the lily black tarot which kind of is a nudge to the lily white tarot in order in in, in a way that um says that you can bring or should bring this energy to the outer world not just keep it within you so i really like that again i love this little little nudges um here's the ten of coins or ten of pentacles again it's about abundance it's about not focusing ha huh, yeah <laughs> it's about abundance it's about legacy i love that this one coin at the bottom kind of functions as a bud like um so you can kind of re replant it um so that's kind of about the or that's talking about the legacy to me so i really like that again quite easy to read here we have the um page of pentacles the knight of pentacles i think that's probably i mean maybe she's just a bit um rounded who knows um she's gorgeous anyhow but maybe that's the only pregnant woman in the whole deck <laughs> who knows um here's the queen of pentacles she is almost a bit she has a fairy wipe i don't know why my camera isn't focusing properly come on phone please okay she almost has a bit of a fairy wipe to me so <laughs> that's quite interesting the other um queens all looked a bit more mature this one looks very young and then here we have the king okay now i quickly will shuffle all the cards and then i'll be right back with a little reading okay so i laid out some cards i had to shuffle a lot of decks so it took a bit <laughs> but i haven't really looked at them but I really love how they look together, actually. So this is the Mind Maze Oracle. This is the L'Oracle de, de Reflet. I cannot say it properly, so whatever. <laughs> the Lily Black, of course, and the Lily White Tarot. So I really like the message here because to me, it's all about um, if I if I stay up here first, um, this is like the the innocence and the um, kind of happy childhood memories and the lover's card with it kind of tells me to integrate them into my life today to be maybe a bit more carefree um or to be just a bit more curious a bit more happy a bit more i don't know just take it with me and if i look at these two cards um, of the mind maze oracle and they pretty much say the same because here you have like the routines like the everyday um things you have to do that tear you down that wear you out um and you have a, a message here so to me this is kind of the message that takes me out of this by integrating um the um kind of the, the, the positive childhood memories into today everyday life because it is possible like awaken your inner child um really like that and if you look down here it's <laughs> pretty much the same and I really had to laugh because if you look at the English descriptions of those um cards it's spring break <laughs> isn't that awesome <laughs> I really had to laugh about that so here you have like the more materialism um the um I don't know it's it's a very stable um a card it's, it's about realism it's about nature and this one is about leaving exactly that behind so get a bit out of all of your everyday routine cut loose um let new beginnings emerge so um i actually really like how it all comes together in one so enjoy your day today <laughs> and cut loose and just let things i don't know look at them from child child with child eyes and and um curiosity and do what you want so 
So I think that's a great message for a Saturday. So I'll stick with that. <laughs> um, and I just hope that you're all having a gorgeous, lovely day. <laughs> Bye.